Hi, so this is a new month, which means that it's time for me to talk about the books that I read last month uh, in February. Uh, I didn't really read that much. I don't remember exactly how many books, but um, I have I have my Goodreads open here, so I'm just going to talk about each of them a little, a little bit. Um, the first book that I read was uh, Fantasy. It's a City of Stairs by Robert Jackson Bennett. This is the first book in the Divine series. series. Um, I was just catching up a little bit on Robert Jackson Bennett before his newest book came, came comes out, and yeah, it. I like this one. Um, a lot of people always say that Robert Jackson Bennett is like a you know Brandon Sanderson light or something like that, and I don't really understand why he writes differently than Sanderson. Um, his dialogues are different. The style of characters, like the characterization, is quite different. Like the only similarity, I guess, is just like um, in the what's it called, uh, the the heart magic system that he often uses. And I guess it's more like the similarities are more um, apparent in Foundry Side than in this one. So I don't know. I, but this is like a fantasy. A mystery with a little bit of mystery element but not much and i like this just fine but I'm not sure if i'm gonna continue with the next books um we'll see i guess um the next book is actually non-fiction and that is the heat will kill you first by jeff goodall so um i realized that this year is probably gonna be the hottest year on record which will be you know impressive considering last year was already by far the hottest year <laughs> on record and i've also seen a lot of you know reliable sources say that this summer i mean for the you know northern hemisphere it's gonna be a pretty bad summer and so i thought i'd read some i'd read some you know climate related books particularly the ones that are related to you know heat and summer and stuff like that uh, i read two last month this is one of them um, so this one is just about heat and why it's so dangerous and how exactly it can be dangerous and what you can do to like avoid the the, the most dangerous things about it, I guess. Um, I really like this. Um, it's very focused, like it doesn't really talk about anything else all that much, just about heat. So it can be a bit, you know, slow or boring sometimes, but it's a really good and informative read. And yeah, uh, I think it's going to be a very relevant read um, soon. <laughs> so, yeah. Next, uh, I read a novella, and that is a Fina by Nino Cipri. Um, so this is about wormholes in Ikea. Well, not Ikea. It's like um, <laughs> an off-brand version of Ikea called Litten Varelt, which means little world or small world in Swedish. Um, so this was very interesting. Basically, the characters work in ikea and they find like <laughs> wormholes connecting this particular not ikea this particular off-brand ikea with another in another universe and yeah it's really um it has a non-binary character which is always nice because i don't really see them a lot in fiction and yeah, it's one of those novellas that I wish were not novellas, but full-on novels. Um, it's good, don't get me wrong, but I wish there was more of it. And there are technically more of it because there is a second book, but I wish this particular story has a bit more in it, if that makes sense. Um, next is another climate nonfiction, and that is It's Not That Radical by Michaela Loach. Loke, I don't know how to pronounce the name. And this is not about like uh, the the science in climate change or the economics or clim in climate change or anything like that. This is solely focused on the topic of climate justice and what it is, why it's so important, and how it can be done theoretically, I guess. And it's a very um, how do I say this? It's very like a left leaning book, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, the language that is used in the book like um, I, I associate that type of language with like uh, very 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 you know left leaning people uh, I think particularly the one that struck me very interesting is that the, the book uses um, 
the term imperial core and imperial periphery which i don't know why i think it's just because of my experience on twitter but i i associate that with you know leftists and um it's a really good book it doesn't really talk about like i said the other aspects of climate change but it does talk very deeply about um climate justice so if you're interested in that particular topic then this is an excellent book to pick up um next i have a couple of books that i listen to on audiobook the first one is harrow the ninth by tamsin moore the second book in the log tomb series the sequel to gideon the ninth This book is kind of like the first book, but even crazier. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what to say about like this. It's just batshit crazy, basically. Um, there's a lot of like characters who I'm not sure I know, and there's a lot of um, how do I say this? Uh, so basically, both the first book and this book are from the point of view of the character who know. Who knows the least about the plot if that makes sense so it's a bit like a puzzle so you have to slowly figure it out before you know exactly what's going on and it can be frustrating while you figure it out but once you finally does figure it out it's a very rewarding reading experience so i understand why a lot of people don't like these books but i think i do and i i want to read the third one uh in march hopefully so yeah Uh, another book that I listened to on audiobook is Iron Widow by Jiran Jie Zhao. Um, I mean, this I read this because the author was involved in like the Hugo Awards controversy, which happened a few weeks ago. Um, and yeah, this this book is interesting. I have a bit of a mixed feeling. Um, on one hand, I don't really like the plot. Well, not the plot, but just the pacing of it, and the world building feels very. I don't know, just thrown together without much thought behind it, and the pacing is sometimes really fast, and then it slows down when nothing happens, and then just yeah, I don't know. It it feels weird when when I was reading it. The one thing that I really like is the main character, uh, whose name I blanked out. I forgot what her name is, but yeah, basically a lot of people say that this main character is a badly written main character because she's a terrible person. And I do agree that she's not the best person. Like she is, but the thing is, I feel like a lot of people who read this and say that, "Wow, this is a badly written character. Like she's a terrible person." They don't consider the fact that maybe this character is not meant to be liked. Because when I finish the book, I get the sense that the author didn't mean for readers to like her. I mean, like the main character. So yeah, I mean, unlikable main characters are great. I think I know not everyone likes it. I guess, but I think they can be more interesting than just main main characters that are just likable all the time. So, yeah, I really like the main character, and I don't. I'm not the biggest fan of everything else here. So yeah. Um, however, a book that I'm very that I'm a very big fan of is Robert Jackson Bennett's The Tainted Cup, which is my favorite book of 2024 so far. And I think it will be my favorite until like uh, the new, what is it? The new like Sun Eater book comes out. I think until then this will be my favorite of 2024. Um, so this is a new book in in a new series, and this this one is actually like actually you know mystery fantasy or fantasy mystery whatever. So if you're like mostly a mystery reader and want to get into fantasy then this might be a good book for it um the mystery aspect is very strong uh the fantasy aspect less so uh there are, it feels a bit derivative but not in a bad way it's still well executed but yeah the mystery aspect is really the main thing and the characters like the two main characters well not just the main character and um uh, the other side character i guess uh, their relationship like between this the main character who's like a an assistant and there's this detective who's really weird and the, their relationship is really weird but it's also really fun to read and yeah i just really love this and i don't think this is uh robert jackson bennett's best book per se i still think american elsewhere might be his best but this is really close so yeah i'm a big fan 
Um, the next book is actually the second like climate related book. Uh, well, no, the third, but this is the second that's related to heat, and that is Fire Weather by John Valiant, Valent, no, yeah, Valent. And this book is about, particularly about a, a wildfire in Canada, in Fort McMurray, yeah, in 2016. It was like one of the worst fires in Canadian history, I think, and it, it tells the story of how it, exactly it happens through the eyes of the people who were in Fort McMurray at the time and it also tells like just in general about wildfires and the changing climate I mean wildfires in a warmer world basically and it's really interesting and there's like a section about um, what's it called about the history of climate science which seemed a bit out of place even though I really liked it but yeah it's an excellent book and again, I feel like this is going to be relevant in the coming months, but I hope not, of course. Next, another book that I listened to in audiobook is The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. Uh, this is a weird one. I don't really like this one all that much, to be honest. I think it's my least favorite Emily St. John Mandel, and not, ju- not just because it's the one that's least, you know, speculative. It's not sci-fi at all compared to the rest of her books that I've read, which is Station Eleven and uh, Sea of Tranquility. But that's not why I don't like this book all that much. I think it just tries to tackle way too many different things and way too many different characters. And it ended up not really succeeding in doing anything well. So, yeah. I mean, it still has her, you know, trademark beautiful writing. So if you're looking for that, then maybe still give this one a try. Um, next, another audiobook, and that is What What Feasts at Night by T. Kingfisher, um, the sequel to her novella, which was What Moves the Dead, I believe. Um, this is kind of a lot of the same compared to the first book, but it has a lot more focus on the main character and some of the side characters, which means that I like this a bit more. Um, T. Kingfisher is a bit of a strange writer to me. On one hand, I understand why she's so popular. On the other hand, I'm also surprised that she's so popular. I don't know if that doesn't make sense. Yet. Yeah, that's just how I think. But yeah, it's interesting. And uh, again, another novella that I wish was a bit longer, but whatever. Not a big complaint. But uh, the next book, I have quite a bit complaint. And that is, th- this is an arc, by the way, that I cut through NetGalley. And that is... Uh, Red Side by Meredith Mooring. Yeah. So this is often compared to like Thompson Moore's like Gideon the Ninth. I mean I get I get the comparison. It's you know, it's very sapphic and it's it mixes fantasy and sci fi in space, so I get the comparison, but this book is just not quite at that level, not even close. Um I think the pr- the main problem is that the characters all feel very naive and they all like the book don't spend too many times with too many ta- too much time with the character well I can't talk yeah the book didn't spend all that much time with the characters and w- it ended up being just like me not caring about anyone <laughs> except for the main character kind of but even then I don't really care too much about her and the plot is just you know, it's mediocre, it works, but it doesn't surprise me, except for the very end of it, which is interesting, but maybe not enough for me to read the next one. I don't know, I just, I'm not the biggest fan of this book, unfortunately. <laughs> um, and the final book that I read is another T. Kingfisher book that I listened to on audio, and that is The Twisted Ones. So, yeah, I've been trying to read a lot of the these, like, rural rural fantasy books, and this was one of them, and I enjoyed this one quite a bit, though not as much as Kingfisher's other books, like the one before. But yeah, this is about a haunted house, basically. There's this editor who's the main character. She has to move to her like dead grandma's house to clean it up because her father asked her to. And in there, she finds some weird stuff with her step-grandfather related to her step-grandfather, and yeah, she 
doesn't want to clean the house but because she finds all these weird stuff she is willing to stay and figure out what's going on and i like the main character like she's really funny and she, the narration the voice is really strong but the plot itself is kind of rep- rapid repetitive and yeah i'm just not the biggest fan of the mythology or i guess the like fantasy part of it the horror part of it it's not particularly scary it does a decent job at building atmosphere but it's yeah it feels like a watered down version of you know like lovecraftian mythos mythos if that makes sense but yeah so those are the books that i read i don't know how many it was like i didn't count but yeah i hope you enjoyed the video and if you want to see more of it then feel free to leave a like and subscribe as usual um i think i'm gonna do a couple of like favorite something videos this month we'll see but yeah bye